Boy, I can't wait to show Nick this new hub world that we have on our server. It's going to be amazing. Just look at how gorgeous it is. Yeah, I should probably just update this Terraform server for um, Terraform with the new Minecraft version for, for Eric. Terraform apply. He's been asking for this new version to be up there for ages. So that's the great thing about Terraform. Super easy. I'm just going to change a couple of bits in my resource. Hit apply. And away oh. we go. That'll deploy a new version of the container to it Azure. It took hours and hours to build this. Nick. Yes, Nick. yes, yes, yes. Did our server just crash? Oh, did it crash? Well, it um, wasn't a crash as such. As, well, I've, I'm upgrading the... The, the instance of the server and um, I mean it, it sort of takes the container offline uh, Nick you do know how immutability works right yes I do and immutability is uh, especially with docker containers because the file system lives in the container so when the container dies so does the file system oh yeah right you just deleted my world Nick I can see that well, I'm sorry about that, good buddy, but on a brighter note, this episode of HashiCraft, we can show you how to fix that problem because we can show you how to use a mutable sort of how to bypass the immutability problems with containers by using file storage inside of Azure. So let's kind of uh, dig into that. So recapping, let's just have a look at where we were last time. So what we created last time was this setup. So we have this Azure resource group and we've got this container group. So the container group is running our Minecraft server inside of Azure container instances. And we can see that running just there. Now, when I'm running my Terraform plan and my apply, that's creating those instances. Unfortunately, what's happening. And if I just kind of dig into the container here, well, if you look inside of the Minecraft folder, what you can see is that there is a folder called world and world is the folder where the kind of the main world data is stored. Now, of course, because this is kind of running in a, well, an immutable instance, whenever that container disappears, so does that file structure. Yeah, so, I, I kind of noticed that. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to move that file system into file storage. And we can do that by kind of creating some storage accounts inside of Azure and then mapping those storage accounts to the volumes inside of the Docker containers. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Are we going to use Terraform again to do that? We are most certainly going to use Terraform again. So what okay. we're going to do is we're going to use some new Terraform resources and we're going to create a storage share. And a storage share in Azure is going to allow us to map a file share inside of a storage account and put that into our container. So does that mean like like a shared network disk on, on your com computer, something like that? Yeah, exactly, pretty much. So the, the kind of the, what we need to do is we need to create a couple of new resources. So we're going to create a resource, which is the storage account, because storage shares live inside of a storage account. So we're going to use this uh, resource block yet again, and we're going to kind of give it a name. And I'm going to call it, well, I'm going to keep it consistent. I'm going to call it HashiCraft, T, HashiCraft TF. And... What I also need to do is I need to add some other properties. So I can go through, I add a resource group, a location, and things like that. So this syntax, Nick, that you're using, that's the same as we did last time, right? Like to refer to another resource and then the of that resource? That's right. I'm using the interpolation syntax. So the, okay. the kind of the, the full resources arguments that we need to provide are defined in the documentation. We'll put a link to that below, but as a bare minimum, we need a name, a storage account name, and we need kind of some some other bits. So let's let's kind of quickly look at those. So okay. I'm gonna do what anybody 
does well. And I'm, I'm copy pastoring because, well, I can't really be trusted to do stuff typing live. And um, why? Why? Why not just do the copy pasta? But this is going to create a storage account block. I am creating a resource group name. I'm specifying the location. And again, that's related to the resource group. And the account tier, I'm just using standard. I could also use premium storage and then the replication type. So the replication type there, I can set that to a number of different values. They're all defined inside of the documentation here. And you'll be able to kind of see, see those settings. So Nick, how come you're uh, adding tags to this uh, search account? Does that mean something as well? Or is that just for your own documentation? It's just for my own documentation. So it'll it'll allow me if I'm filtering within my um, resources in Azure, I can, I can kind of just use the tags there to, to be able to do it. Okay, cool. So to, to, to kind of the next thing that we need to do is we need to be able to define the actual storage shares themselves. So again, okay, so these are those folders you were talking about, right? That's right. So we're going to use another resource. And this time the resource is Azure RM storage share. So I'm going to give it a name. And this is the name that's referenced for Terraform, calling it Minecraft world. And then I want the name for my storage share. Well, I need to create a storage share for, for the world. So I'm going to create it, give it a parameter name and call it world. And then okay. I need to give a reference to the storage account where the share should be created. So I use storage account name. So storage account name. And then what I can do here is again, I can use that interpolation. So I'm going to use Azure RM, RM storage account, the name that I want to reference, which is Minecraft and the property, which I want to reference, which is name like okay. so. And then I'm going to specify the, the quota. So how big do I want this storage account? Well, you kind of tend to get a bit uh, carried away with this sort of setup, Eric. So I probably should set that to about 50 gigabytes. Well, the world we have now is definitely going to fit in that. It's a lot smaller, that's for sure. Now, the, the other thing that we want to be able to do is, we well, we kind of need to be thinking about multiple storage accounts because we need a storage account for the world, but we, we also need a storage account for the configuration. So I can add multiple storage accounts. And you can see here that I'm adding a storage share for the world, but I can also add one for the configuration. Both of them reference the, the kind of the, the overall storage account. So Nick, this 50, is that 50 gigabytes or 50 megabytes? Yeah, that's right. We're, we're doing 50 gig um, in this instance on there. Okay, one gig's pretty big for a config. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can make it smaller, but um, I don't pay the bills. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, what we do, though, is now we've got those storage shares created. We need to map them. So if we go over and have a look at our container group resource, you'll see that in the documentation, there is an element defined for volume. So container has volume and volume is definition of a volume mount or a container, which is defin defined in the volume block below. So let's have a look at that. So here's the volume block. So we're creating a name. So we're going to specify the name of the new mount and we can specify the mount path. So where do we want it mounted to inside of our container? And then we can use a reference to the storage account name, the key, which we can get from our resource and the share name. And then what that allows us to do is that allows us to map a volume inside of our Docker container to our Azure storage. So let's kind of uh, just see what that looks like. So Nick, that mount path, do we, do we know where we need to mount these files? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to have oh, these two setups like this. We're going to have a setup which specifies the world. And I want to map that to a folder, Minecraft slash world. So that's going to be this folder here inside of the container. And okay. what I also want to do is I want to add a volume for the configuration. Because in Minecraft, what I also have 
is a config folder, which again is inside of the main Minecraft folder. Now, we're kind of using Minecraft as an illustration here, but you know, you don't have to use Minecraft. This kind of principle is exactly the same for anything else. When kind of a lot of the best practices, and, and you'll hear a lot of folks saying, well, you should always keep your containers immutable, and you always need to be able to store data. And if you're yeah, doing things- you always and, have real-time data. Yeah, saving images or anything like that, you need to, to, to save it. And while you should keep the container immutable, you still need to be able to have the capability to persist things like data. Minecraft is also a 10 year old application. So we kind of, you know, got to think about those things as well. It's not always nice greenfield applications that we're, we're dealing with, but I've added that. Let me, let me run that Terraform apply again, and then let's get that running. So okay. Terraform apply, what that's going to do is that's going to check the situation that exists. And it's going oh, to I check saw some red there, Nick. Yeah, it's going to delete some stuff. So it's detecting that we already have a container that exists. Now, to add a new volume, we have to replace that container. All right. And so that would uh, destroy the world again, then it'll destroy the world again. But this time, what we're doing is we're adding our new storage account. And we are also adding our storage shares, and we're mounting those into the container. So from now on, all of that is going to be persisted across destructions when, you know, somebody like myself makes a mistake and, well, destroys something. Oh, but, looking forward to that. Well, we will see. So that's creating now, and it'll only take a, a little while. But um, Terraform is going to go through and it's going to create the storage accounts. So if we look at that, then we'll kind of should be able to see that created and we can see it there. So. Ashicraft TF, there's our storage account. And inside our storage account, we asked it to create a number of different file shares. And we can see both of those there, config and world. And well, actually, those have started to populate, which means our container has come up, which is pretty exciting too. So let's take a quick look over and see what's going on here. Container I, I saw something that got me very excited, Nick. Oh, what was I that? I saw a, uh, a whitelist.json. That's right. Yeah, we're not going to have to go through that entire process time and time again anymore because now, well, we're persisting all of that configuration into stateful storage. Woohoo! Yeah, finally, right? So that's all up and running. Let me just log in there. So Archon CLI, and we will just do um, password. And the password, which I've got here in an environment variable. And I'm just oh, going to add myself. Um, I thought you didn't have to add yourself anymore, Nick, because of the whitelist file. Well, I don't, but I've got to create it the, the first time. So oh, okay. I'm just going to bounce over there and we're going to create that server. We're logging in and you can see there that we've got our completely vanilla Minecraft world. Now, I'm going to just dig some holes here because digging holes is generally something that digging myself into holes is something I'm pretty good at. But yep. um, we've got those there. Now, what uh, I want to be able to do is I want to be able to destroy that. So let me just restart that container. And then when I restart the container, unlike previously, when everything got destroyed, it'll now persist it because all of those files are getting persisted across the stateful storage. Restarting oh, those groups. Let's have a look. Oh, I saw it restarting. Yeah, it's restarting there. Let's go and have a look. It's just starting up. Okay, so let's see if we can get that. Is that, has that started up? Oh, great, and it has. So okay. theoretically, if I go over to my Minecraft folder and into world, I can see all of my files there. Now, oh, I see the level. Yes. Yeah, so if we just log back into Minecraft, we should now see all of those holes that I dug earlier. 
which, and there they are. And also that whitelist, I didn't have to do that again. So that's pretty neat. We've, um, okay, Nick. we've so, kind of uh, proven that that works, Eric. Yeah. Um, um, how about you, uh, stay there and, and rebuild that, uh, hub server, buddy. Uh, I could do that. Uh, it might take me a little while. And maybe we'll do that on the next episode of HashiCraft because we'll be back next week. And next week, we're going to start looking at how we can take all of this and we can put it into a CI, CD workflow. So as always, like and subscribe. And we will look yes. forward to seeing you next time. Like and subscribe. And uh, I'm looking forward to be able to collaborate on the... We don't have to rely on your uh, typing, Nick. Always a good thing. Next time. See you next week.